this session. Techniques for using one computer, one classroom computer to teach with history websites. And we will get to our presenter, uh, Dr. Danielle Bradshaw, in just one minute. My name is Liz Kolb, and I will be the moderator for this session of our 4T conference. Welcome to the last day of the conference. We've had some great sessions, and it's nice to see some familiar names and some new names in the session as well. So just a couple of Reminders, we are in partnership with Oakland Schools and we're happy to have them on board this year with the School of Education at the University of Michigan. And we want to thank our door prize sponsors, Glogster, Digo, VoiceThread, Wix, and Cherry Lake Publishing. They have some great door prizes for us. If you fill out those session evaluations, that would be fantastic. And if you are applying for CEU, don't forget to log in with your full name, first and last name. You are welcome to log out now and log back in if you haven't done so and stay for the entire hour just so that the state of Michigan will give you full credit for that. And also, if you have any technical issues, I will be happy to kind of back channel with you in the chat room um, so that we don't disrupt the presenter or the other participants, but we get your issues solved in some way. All the recordings are posted on our conference schedule at 4tvirtualcon.com. Under the session schedule, you might have to go back a little bit. It's a Google document, but I promise you the recordings are there. Most of them are posted now. A few aren't quite there yet, but we will get to them shortly. And I would also like to just take a minute, and if you can grab that magic wand tool next to the whiteboard, go ahead and let us know where you are located at by clicking as close as you can in that world map. We try to get a nice big world map because we've had some international participants. And I know in the room, um, Yusreya, I hope I'm saying your name right, you mentioned you were from Egypt, so that is very exciting to have. And it looks like all over the U.S. today, we have, um, at least in the um, eastern part of the U.S., we have a nice um, contingency today. So, um, and, and looks like somebody out west. Excellent. Well, welcome everybody to our session today. I want to tell you, oh, Budapest, awesome, fantastic. So, welcome. And I want to tell you a little bit about our presenter today. Uh, our presenter is Dr. Danielle Bradshaw, and a little bit about Dr. Bradshaw. She is an assistant professor for Liberty University School of Education. She holds a Bachelor's of Arts in History and a Master's in Education in Social Science Education from the University of Florida. She also has a PhD in Education from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. I bet that was a nice place to study. And her research interests are in the fields of education technology, professional development, after school program, and social studies. And these are all topics very close to my heart. I was a former social studies teacher, so I'm very excited for this particular presentation. So I will hand over the mic to Dr. Bradshaw, and please give her a warm welcome. Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Danielle Bradshaw, and I hope that you can hear me clearly. If you cannot, you are welcome to write so in the chat room, and we are glad to help you. Thank you so much for coming today to this session. I love history, and I love to talk, so this works out very well for me. The title is Techniques for Using History Websites in the One Computer Classroom. I am going to share some wonderful resources. We are going to share experiences, and I hope that this will work out well for you. We have quite a few goals for this presentation. This presentation will address quite a few things. We're going to talk about benefits of history websites. I'm going to share some of the largest, most popular history websites. And actually, you will get a chance to go on a web tour of all of these websites. We are going to talk about pedagogical strategies that will help you in a one computer classroom. As you all know, the one computer classroom has unique challenges and you have to do quite a bit of planning in order to make history websites work, but we will talk about that. 
We will also ask you to share some of your experiences with history websites. You can also share any additional websites that you think we all should know about, and we will reflect about the One Computer Classroom. So let's go ahead and get started. As you all know, history websites have so many resources that can be helpful for the classroom. They have collections of primary source documents, letters, diaries, so on and so forth. Also images, including photographs of artifacts and people, lots of audio and video resources as well. As you know, students do like to hear speeches, and interviews, different documentary footage, and so as a result, they are valuable tools for the history classroom. I am here to let you know that even with just one computer in the classroom, you can still use these compilations to promote student learning. Of course, the National Council for the Social Studies promotes technology use in the social studies classroom. Children can benefit from very careful technology exposure. Hicks, Doolittle, and Lee have a very interesting quote here. They say that the emergence of freely available web-based primary resources may well serve as a key ingredient for the revitalization and transformation of the social studies. I would like to know what you all think about this quote. You're welcome to use the chat room here on the left, but I would like to know what you think about web-based resources as they relate to the social studies. Of course, I have my thoughts, but it's great to hear from you all. I think that they can be indeed very helpful because a lot of times history teachers, yes, thank you, Laura, they do make history come alive. A lot of times teachers rely on the textbook, and that's for a lot of different reasons. We all know that, thank you, STEM specialists, I do agree as well. I, a lot a lot of times teachers rely on the textbook for many different reasons, including timing reasons, curriculum pacing reasons, and also because it is a comfort zone. Christine, it does make it more exciting. Thank you for the smile, that's Barima. That's right, Susan, images and videos can augment a chapter. And Caroline, we will talk about issues of validity. And Liz, thank you for talking about access to primary resources. When it comes to primary resources and history websites, it is wonderful for collaboration and different projects, for fostering class discussions, and it's good for children to practice being a historian. All too often, children think that history is something that's dead from the textbooks that they just have to study. However, once they practice, being a historian. They understand that history is interesting, complex, and wonderful. You are right, STEM specialists. A lot of teachers believe that history is something that has already occurred. It's done. It's in the past, so we can read about it. However, history is the study of cultures. We are all a part of history studies, and so students also need to understand that they need to study cultures and everyday life as a part of living, as a part of history. And here are just a few more on this PowerPoint, history websites can help with student interest. You all talked about that very, very well. And the use of multimedia is definitely appealing to today's children. They love multimedia. They love different approaches and activities. So that is helpful. Thank you for the smiley face. That is encouraging. Students practice research, critical inquiry, and interpretation. Once again, they learn about the complexity of the past. We all know that history provides a series of human stories, but students need to learn about how to evaluate issues of bias and point of view. Students also evaluate historical evidence and social interpretations. Many state standards encourage activities with historical thinking and research, and so that is very encouraging as well. The role of the teacher. This is essential because we have to study how teachers are 
curriculum gatekeepers, and Thornton wrote about this already. The teacher's perspective definitely influences classroom practices because teachers are the ones who mainly determine how to arrange and present learning material. So before we talk about all these wonderful websites and these resources, I encourage you all to reflect. Reflect upon your particular teaching setting and reflect upon your thoughts on the one computer classroom. How do your views influence your particular actions when it comes to the one computer classroom? I'll just give one example. Sometimes teachers think, oh, I have one computer. I am limited in what I can do, therefore we will stick to the book. Think, think about what your thoughts are on the one computer classroom. Of course, I'm going to talk to you today about how even with one computer in a classroom, you can still do a lot to promote historical thinking for your students. Absolutely, STEM specialists, it can be very useful as a whole group tool with a projector. We will talk about that later on in the presentation. So even if you don't have an iPad or a computer for every single child, then you have to take the whole group approach. But that is still helpful as opposed to just doing nothing. And I think everyone agrees with you. Oh, here are some more. Yes, pre-service teachers do struggle with how to handle one computer in a classroom because a lot of times we have the mindset of every child needs to have their own computer. However, group work can be helpful. The one computer classroom is definitely dependent on the teacher, as Laura said. Even though students do not have as much input, it is your job to look for ways to provide input for the students, and we will talk about how that can be done through reading and writing and through discussion activities. Stephen talked about how at one place, the teachers pull their computers together to make a lab. That is a fantastic idea. S. Zeverima says that the computer is used in the classroom too, which is fantastic. Susan talks about issues of planning. It does take additional planning and curriculum mapping, but she also says that it does work. She teaches art history and uses video mapping images in order to discuss the art of another culture. Thank you so much for all of this input. Your input is essential in terms of sharing with others about what works. So as you are the teacher and you are the curriculum gatekeepers, you must reflect upon your thoughts and you must have a can-do attitude and think about what can I do even if I only have one computer. Now we are moving into one of the fun sections of this particular presentation. Before I start with this, Laura Coase brought up a good point, and she said that the Google Art Project is fantastic for a one computer classroom. I do agree. We will now look at these various history websites. And, of course, I have to read the disclaimer at the top. You all know that every time you go to external websites, you always have to give the disclaimer. So the I and the conference, we do not endorse all of the information in these next websites. When you click on these links, you are leaving the 4T virtual conference jurisdiction. Of course, you should always carefully review websites and resources before you. Always be prepared to discuss all information with students, cite and note authorship of any materials you use, and of course, observe copyright use guidelines. These websites are great about talking about how you can use the materials and what is approved in terms of using these materials. They have fantastic anthologies and collections of lesson plans and pictures and so on. Oh, good. Kristen loves the Library of Congress and the National Archives resources. We will start with the first web tour, and I will talk to you about it for just a little while before we start the web tour. The first one is digital history. Our wonderful moderator has already put the link over here in the chat part. But she will start the web tour very soon. Stephen Pressdorf is mentioning the Gutenberg project, which is 
wonderful. It is wonderful. This digital history website is the first one that we will talk about. And as you will see, the purpose for the digital history website is using new technologies to enhance teaching and research. You will see that there are several headings here, eras, topics, resources, and references. This website contains a plethora of resources for teaching history. And as you will see, it mainly focuses on America. However, you will look over here for teachers, and you will see links on classroom handouts, lesson plans, and even quizzes. I encourage you to enjoy this web tour, and Liz is going to set it for five minutes. Once you are done, please come back over to the left and click on the polling responses column to indicate that you are done. Liz is going to set the timer. Thank you very much. She is quite efficient. And you may come back, and then we will move on to the next one. Well, hello to everyone. I hope that you enjoy that web tour. This is quite a great feature of Blackboard Illuminate. I'm so glad to share these with you. These are websites that have been tested. They are usually updated very often, and they have lots of new things coming all the time. Please let me know if you cannot hear me. OK, great. And so a lot of times teachers, history teachers, have so many things going on that when you mention using websites and web resources, they feel as if they have to construct everything. However, one of the best, one of the great things about these websites is that they already offer lesson plans and resources that can definitely help you in terms of your planning. And so let's go ahead and talk about the next one. The next one is from EdTech. Oh, this is fantastic. I hope you all are checking the chat section because people are sharing lots of wonderful resources that can be helpful to you. The next 
site that we will take a web tour of, thank you Liz, is the EdTech Teacher Best of History website. This is a teacher resource and it is an award winning portal that contains lots of links to websites, lesson plans, teacher guides, activities, games, quizzes, and more. Go ahead and enjoy your web tour of this site and then we will come back. Thank you all so much. Please continue to share additional websites over in the chat room. And Liz will set the timer. Okay, so for the next web tour that we will take, this website is for the Library of Congress, which has a vast repository of teacher resources. And Liz is going to load the web tour for you. I will go ahead and just tell you a few things about it. And there it is. The Library of Congress offers lots of classroom materials and also professional development. And as I mentioned before, they have vast digital collections. They also have lesson plans and all that correlate with common core standards and state standards and other standards. And so I encourage you to look through these. Liz is up, oh, Stephen uses it for his library records. Great. And you can come back in just a few minutes. All right, everybody, thank you for your wonderful participation. This is just so much fun for me. I hope that it is also fun 
for you. Jason brought up a very good point when he talked about how there is just so much in the websites. Yes, it is very easy to be overwhelmed because history is huge and there are lots of resources out there. However, your job, you just do your best and it's good to start small, pick one website, pick one area, just start from there. You train your students how to think like a historian, you start with just one lesson and keep adding as much as you possibly can. Jason, we appreciate your honesty because we are all thinking that, even if we do not say so. Let us start with the next web tour. This next website is from the National Archives. They have a plethora of teachers' resources. Is there a big difference? There are some differences in terms of the amount of materials that are offered. However, if you just look through each one, then you will note the differences over time. Don't feel like you have to totally memorize a particular website right from the beginning. Thank you, Liz. This is the web tour for the National Archive, and they have quite a few teachers' resources in terms of lesson plans, activities, and even some possible school tours. tours. They have lots of primary resources and also state and regional resources. Go ahead and take your time, take a few minutes to look through the National Archives teacher resources. Hi, everyone. Well, we only have two more web tours, so we will go ahead and start with the next one. The next one is for Smithsonian Education. And for the Smithsonian, they have put together a nice website that has quite a few resources for educators. And thank you, Liz, for starting the web tour already. If you scroll down, you will see just a small sample of the resources that are available for educators. Go ahead and look through those, and then we will start the timer very soon. And there it is. All right, this next website that we will take our web tour for is called the Teaching History Website for the National History Education Clearinghouse. This one is geared very much for teachers in terms of the links, in terms of the resources, in terms of the videos, and so you might find this website to be very, very helpful. Teachinghistory.org is specifically designed for K-12 history teachers, and so go ahead and look through this site.
All right, welcome back everybody. Now we have concluded with the web tours of the history website. You now have a lot of information that is going on and going through your heads right now. So now we will bring everything on home, as we say, and we will talk about pedagogical strategies and techniques for the one computer classroom. The one computer classroom requires additional planning and considerations. And so for this next part, thank you Liz, she is pulling up a website that I want to discuss with you. This website comes from TeacherTap and this whole Educate slash WebTap, TeacherTap website was developed by Larry Johnson and Annette Lamb. They give some very practical strategies about dealing with the one computer classroom. All right, so you should see that now. When it comes to the one computer classroom, a lot of people think, what can I do with just one computer? You all seem to have a great handle on this because you gave me some great suggestions about what you can actually do. If you open up that first link, yes, Larry and Annette are great, and Edgescape has wonderful resources that can help you in terms of planning and gathering additional resources. If you click on the first link for the possibilities, and you scroll down to the PDF that says download a one computer classroom possibilities PDF file, that opens up very nicely. When you look at this graphic, you will see that there are quite a few possibilities for a one computer classroom. People often think in terms of the deficit, however, there are lots of things that you can do. Let's go ahead and talk about those for just a minute and you all are welcome to write about your thoughts in the chat room. I have the PDF open on the web tour. I'm not sure if you all can see it, but it is was open on the web tour, and there it is. If you scroll down, you will see that with the one computer classroom, you can assess, present, allow students to access information, communicate, and produce, and publish. And so your role as the history teacher is to use the website and also, of course, use your textbook and your other materials to come up with customized ways to allow your students to engage in historical thinking. If you start over here on the left, you will see that for teacher use, there are quite a few uses, of course, but I encourage you to look through these tools for productivity, data collection, and the information board, and use it as much as possible for your history classroom in terms of administrative tools and other tools. If you look over here on student use, then you see a lot of potential possibilities. You will see that you can use that one computer as a creation tool and as a learning tool and as a way for students to access information, communicate and present and also to be assessed. If you're having any problems with opening this PDF, then Liz will open up a private chat room for you in order to help you with any problems that you are having. You will see that there are a myriad of possibilities. These all require very deliberate curriculum mapping ahead of time before the semester begins in order for you to be able to incorporate any of these activities. I would like to bring your attention to one. I'm over beside the box that says present and if you look for direct class, you will see a tab, a you will see the words provide information. This is especially where these websites can be helpful because the websites provide online stories, movies, maps, sometimes virtual field trips, simulations. You can also use Google Earth. You can do quite a bit with using your one computer as a projection screen to promote historical thinking for the students. If you look over beside present, and there is a little section for present, you will see that you can present, stu students can present in terms of being speakers, delivering oral reports, making multimedia projects, and setting up 
their own review activities. This is where project-based assignments can be helpful. Even if you do not have an entire class period or a set huge amount of time, you can set up projects that last over several days or even several weeks. Students do enjoy putting together pictures and albums and doing particular activities. If you look down at the bottom of the PDF and you see this section down here for Production and Publishing Center, you see that students can engage in email writing, work processing, setting up databases and spreadsheets, engaging with graphics and multimedia, and you can do quite a bit with just Microsoft Word or even Google Docs. Do we have any people out there who enjoy using all the various Google Docs applications? They have quite a few free applications that can help students, and they're free, that can help students in terms of production and publishing. Yes, Aisha says yes. Do you all have any other ideas that you would like to share from your experience in terms of helping students with the possibilities? I think that this graphic is quite comprehensive in terms of planning purposes because you can look at it and as I mentioned before, you customize it based on your classroom, your particular context, the amount of time that you have, and you do what you can for your students. All right. Now, I love technology, and technology is fantastic, especially when it works well. If you go back to the Educate webpage, you will see another link. And Liz is loading it now. She will open the main Educate webpage back up, and then I will tell you which file to open next. It is one wow, it is 153. Time really flies when you are having fun. I assure you all, we will finish on time and we will thank you. We will cover everything. But this is working out very well. Thank you very much, Liz. We will now talk about some of the issues that you have to think about when it comes to the one computer classroom. If you open the PDF for the one computer classroom issues, this graphic provides an excellent planning framework for you in terms of the issues that you might encounter in the one computer classroom. And this, thank you, this graphic is very, very helpful. When it comes to the one computer classroom, you have to plan for the standards. You have to try to keep it simple. You have to model concepts, incorporate PowerQuest or WebQuest, explore internet resources, involve students, and facilitate group activities. All of those issues are planning considerations for the large group. I'll talk about them just a little more in just a minute. When it comes to management considerations, you have to think about hardware needs, timing and issues of equity because we all know students are very interested in their time on the computer. When it comes to small group activities, you can explore center approaches. You have to think about support, center activities, collaboration, scheduling options, realistic expectations, and finding help. I think the one for finding help really applies to everybody. When it comes to the standards, it is wonderful to use those websites to help you match what you are teaching to the standards that you are expected to teach. I'm back over on the left of this PDF and I'm just going down the list with those boxes. When it comes to keeping it simple, we mentioned that before in the chat room, try to keep from being overwhelmed. You can just start with one website and use just one activity just to begin with, start out with projects like group writing and concept maps and setting up diagrams. Also, when it comes to keeping it simple, you have to think about issues of positioning the computer so that the rest of the class is not distracted. When it comes to modeling concepts, think about how you want to demonstrate the historical thinking. Do you want the students to watch? Do you want the teacher just to talk? Do you want the students to talk? Think about the steps that you are going to go through in terms of presenting the information. And you all, I'm sure, are familiar with WebQuest or PowerQuest. You can stimulate inquiry by using the text, the visuals, and videos, and facilitating critical thinking. 
When it comes to your internet resources, you have to make sure that you look over them in great detail, plan, plan, plan. Involve the students and facilitate the group activities. Do not just expect that the students will know just what to do, especially in the beginning. It is a process to lead students through the steps of historical thinking. When it comes to management, you think about the hardware, the CDs, and everything beforehand. When it comes to timing, that is highly customized, highly individual, based on your school and even what you think your class can handle. When it comes to issues of equity, that is also customized, but some ways to handle that are through task cards, timers, setting up center rotation charts, and keeping scheduling records. You can even have the students be responsible for keeping track of their time. When it comes to small group activities, all the information on this section applies to all of the different contexts. Make sure that you think about the room arrangement and make sure that the tasks and everything are clear. When it comes, go back down to the bottom where it says to find help, you should also think about maybe assigning students to help or looking for additional volunteers. All right, so we'll go back to the slides here and we will wrap this up. As I mentioned before, with technology, you have to make sure that everything works. I placed these graphics from Lamb and Johnson on these next two slides. However, you can see that they are located on the web page as well. So I will click through these two because we have talked about it. Make sure that you incorporate your textbook for comparison reasons and use other secondary sources, additional books. Primary resources should be used in moderation. Make sure that you plan carefully and encourage students to take charge of their learning. Put in reading and writing skills and make sure that the lesson is appropriate and clear with a clear assessment with a clear rubric. That is important for students as they engage in the historical thinking process. So history is important. Even with one computer in the classroom, you can provide important historical instruction. You just keep that can-do attitude and do what you can. You all have been fantastic in terms of participating in the discussion as we went along. And so we don't even need to go through this slide. But if you have any additional experiences or any additional favorite websites, you are welcome to type your responses there in that chat, se chat section. Thank you all so much. It was an absolute honor to present to you. Thank you for teaching and for helping students every day. You're welcome to contact me. My email address is down there at the bottom of the screen. And here are my references. Thank you all so much. I am. I just want to jump in there and thank Dr. Bradshaw for joining us today and giving us these fabulous resources and lots of thoughts around the One Computer Classroom and teaching history. And we hope to see everybody at some of our future sessions today. We have two starting up at 2.30. Um, and we hope to see you there. And again, thank you so much, Dr. Bradshaw, for joining us today.